Hello designers and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Jax and today I'm going to show you how to create this plate from scratch. Um, it's a fully automated plate with a different arrangement of hole sets and um, it's got a fully built-in form and everything. I do apologize, this is going to be a very long video. Um, I'm going to show you how to create this whole model from scratch. So I'll, I'll be as quick as I can but um, also be thorough. So I'm just going to dive in and then show you how to control this model and what this model actually consists of. Um, I'm just going to open the form and then you'll see the form here. Um, I'm just going to drag the model a bit away. Okay, so we can control holes and plate size uh, with this. Okay, so um, that's quite a lot involved, but I'm even going to show you how to create this form. Right, so um, I'm just going to show you here, uh, I can actually change the plate size, all right. Um, so length, width and thickness, um, you can just follow the diagram there. And then um, also we can basically determine holes, I can switch holes on and off, right. And then we also have hole spacing factor, uh, this is just a minimum distance between the holes. This is something that we use to to make sure that your holes aren't too close together. Okay. And then we have a little diagram here. And this diagram is basically dynamic to all the parameters that you put in at the bottom. So it changes as you select different features at the bottom here. Okay, that's quite cool. So let me show you what I mean. You have whole pattern input here. So this is just two different methods you can use to determine the spacing of the holes, how you want to determine the spacing of the holes. So now it's saying you determine the spacing by taking the overall distance from the pattern, okay, like that on the diagram. Or you can just say here, I'm using the center distance between each pitch hole, okay, like that. So you notice the thumbnail updated as well. All right, and then we have hole types here. So you can have uh, three different types of holes in this in this model. So you can have slotted holes like you see here. And then we have round clearance holes like this. Okay. And then we have uh, tapped holes. All right. So just a normal hole with threads in it. Okay. So that's that. And then we can also basically set the hole sizes. So if I go round clearance hole, you notice this, this parameter here activates. So I can basically change the size here like this and also the model has protection in it so you can't go too small with your hole sizes and all that okay and then um, on the tapped hole right so you notice the thread parameter updates and then you can actually change the thread sizes here okay and um, this list of thread sizes here is also adaptive so it depends on what parameters you have, this list changes uh, according to that parameter. So if I go and change the plate thickness to five millimeter, then you notice that this list here actually is different. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that as well. And then the slotted hole, we can basically determine the, the size of the hole like that. I can say six here, I can make this 15 for argument's sake. So that changes the slot size. Okay, and then I'm just going to put this back to overall center. Then you notice that this one actually activates together with this one here. I'll even show you how to do the layout on the form um, like this one here, where you put them next to each other and, and all that as well. So we can even change the sizes on this. Also built-in protection, I can't make this too long, right? Let me just go here 150. So you notice here it goes right down to 102, which is the maximum center we can actually have based on the whole space factor up here. Okay, so that's the built-in protection for that. And then also we can change quantities, right? Also built-in protection. This model is meant for having two quantities minimum per pattern. So if I go and try and make this one, it just goes right back to two, the same with this side. 
So that's just what this model was meant for. Also at the bottom, you can see that's grayed out now. So if I just click here on my whole centers, you see that this now activates and then that top one there deactivates, right? So I can just say what my whole spacing should be here. Okay. So with a combination with all these parameters and inputs, um, you can have the most variables that you can think of for just standard whole entries in a plate like this. As an added benefit, uh, I did create a document that you can download. The link is in the description. Let me just show you what the document looks like. This document also basically takes you step by step how to create this model. So uh, you can use this document in conjunction with the video and um, you should get a very good understanding on how it works. Okay. So I'm going to close this model down and then we can start with the tutorial. So I'm just going to open a new model. So I'm using the metric standard millimeter IPT. So I'm going to go create. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some parameters to, to the model. So where you can get that is that little FX at the top there or you can go to manage and go parameters here. Okay, and then it just brings up your blank parameters window. And then we can just start adding parameters. So I'm just gonna add a normal numeric parameter here. I'm gonna say this one is length underscore X. Okay, I'm gonna set this to 100. And then another one, a width underscore Y. And this one also 100. And then I'm gonna add another one thickness. I'm going to put this one to 10 millimeters and then we can go done. So then we're just going to start a new sketch, a 2D, and we're going to select this plane over here. So you notice your front and your Y axis shows top and your X axis shows horizontally. And then I'm just going to add the two point center rectangle, All right? Snap it to the center. I'm going to say here, well, I'm just going to put the two dimensions in and then I'm going to show you how to link these two dimensions to those parameters here. All right. So there's a, a couple of ways you can do this. You can just either type it in. Okay. Sorry. Let me go length underscore X like that. And then this is basically now linked to that parameter over there. Or we can simply go here where the dimension is here. We can go there to that little arrow. And then we can just say here list parameters. And I can just choose here width underscore Y. Okay. And then the other one is to simply just go into the window like this. You can just then select one parameter, control C for copy, and then control V and paste. So there's the, uh, three ways of linking your dimension to your parameter. Okay, so I'm going to finish the sketch. And then I'm just going to apply a extrusion on it. So you can go to model extrude. Uh, I just press E on my keyboard, right? I'm going to link this to the thickness parameter, right? I'm just going to go here and then just select thickness, all right? Or you can go and say list parameter and then select thickness. I'm going to use the symmetrical offset, right, like that. And then this is our basic model, right? I'm just going to take the extrusion feature on the browser. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to say here, this is thickness. Okay. Then we are done with the basic model, right? I'm just going to quickly test this. I'm just going to make sure that the parameters are all linked. Okay, it all seems fine. So I'm just going to change it back. Okay, so now I can start adding more parameters. I'm going to add three more parameters. So I'm just going to go back to my parameter window. I'm going to add a numeric. I'm going to call this OA underscore X. Um, I'm going to set this to 70. And then OA underscore Y. Set this to 70 as well. And then here, I'm going to say whole underscore diameter. 
Okay, I'm going to put this at 10. Right. Okay, now I'm just going to add the whole feature. So we're just going to add one hole. So if I just go sketch, and I'm just going to sketch on the front plane here. Okay, I'm just going to put down a point just near the corner like that. And then I'm just going to add two dimensions to that point. They are going to be going from the center to the point like this. And then I'm just going to also constrain these two dimensions to the parameters. So I'm just going to go to the top one here. I'm going to say list here. And then I want to go to OAX. Okay. I'm going to say divided by two because we are constraining from the center. So obviously OA, OA stands for overall distance. Okay. So it's from, from this point or this hole to the last hole there symmetrically. So uh, we just say divided by two. Okay. And I'm going to do the same with this one. This would be list parameters OA underscore Y. Okay, oh, sorry, um, I need to make this divided by two as well. Right, and then I'm going to finish the sketch. So I'm just going to add a whole feature. I'm just going to select the hole over there. And then our point is already selected. And then I'm just going to constrain this dimension here to hole diameter. Okay, and in terminations through all, that's perfect. So I'm just going to go OK. And then I'm just going to rename this feature here to clear rinse hole. Okay, and then I'm just going to simply right click on it and I'm going to say suppress. Okay, so we're just going to add a couple of features here and then I'm just going to suppress them. And then as we add our rules, the rules would automatically unsuppress them as we go along. All right. Okay, so we're going to add another hole, basically like that one. So I'm just going to redo what we did for, for the hole. I'm just going to add my two dimensions, constrain these overall x divided by 2, and then overall y divided by 2. And then I'm going to finish it. I'm going to go to hole. And then that's already hole diameter through all. That's perfect. OK, so I'm just going to rename this one to tapped hole. OK, so we're going to add a thread feature for this hole. So I'm just going to select the threads. And then I'm just going to select the hole here. I'm going to go to specification. And I'm using the isometric profile like this. I'm just going to go OK. And then this one here, I'm just going to rename to threads. Okay, I'm going to take both of these. I'm going to right click and say suppress feature. Okay, now I'm going to add the slotted hole as well. So I'm going to the rectangle over here. I'm going to choose the overall slot, right? So I'm just going to add it like this in this direction. Okay, and then I'm just going to add our constraints to the center. So this is X. And then this one is the Y. Okay. And then we have a overall one like that. We have the diameter like this. I'm just going to add the feature as well. This one is going to be slot underscore length. Okay. I'm going to set this one to 15. Then I'm going to copy this, go done. And I'm going to apply it to this dimension over here. Right, and then this one would be the hole diameter. So list parameters, hole diameter. Okay, then I'm just going to add two reference dimensions. And later on in our rules, we're going to use those two reference dimensions. I'm just going to move this one that way. And those reference dimensions are going to be this one here. And then you'll notice this pops up. We actually want to over constrain the sketch. We want to see this dimension. So we just go accept. Then also we're going to add another one here, take it from this point or could be this point, doesn't really matter, to the edge of the plate like this. And then once again, we just go accept. So then we have our two reference parameters. If you want to know where they are, it's here. So in your parameters, you'll see there's a tab here called reference parameters. So if you expand that, you'll see the two parameters here. So 
that would be D40 and D41. Okay, so I'm just going to go done. I'm going to finish this sketch here and then I'm going to apply the, the extrude uh, feature on this hole here. So I'm just going to cut it through and I will just go all. So it doesn't matter how thick you make it, it just goes through all. So then go OK. I'm going to rename this feature as well. I'm going to call it slotted hole. Okay. And then once again, right click and we suppress it. We're going to add two more parameters. So if we go back to the parameter window, we're going to add here a numeric. We're going to call this one QT1 scroll X. And that stands for quantity, right? And then the quantity is basically a unitless number. So we can just change the millimeter uh, unit type here. We can just click on it. And then here I normally just type in UL, but you can also go to the list here and then just select unit list over there. Okay. I'm just going to apply OK. I'm going to make it three. And then I'm going to add another one, QTY underscore Y. And then we're going to do the same. Also make it three. All right. So I'm going to go done. And then I'm just going to unsuppress the clearance hole feature unsuppress and then I'm going to apply the rectangular pattern to this hole so we're just going to go to the rectangle pattern over here and then I'm going to select the clearance hole here and then with the direction one we want to we want to select x axis right and the direction is good and then for direction two we want to apply the y axis but the direction is the opposite way we want so we're just going to flip it around here, okay? And then we're just going to apply the parameters to these dimensions. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to say quantity X. And this one would be quantity Y. And then this one here would be overall X. And that one is overall Y. Okay. And then the spacing here, we're just going to change this to distance, right? Both of them. Okay. And then we can just hit OK here. And that basically creates the pattern for us. And then we're just going to take the pattern here. We're going to call it clearance hole pattern type one. All right because we're going to apply another pattern for this hole here. So we call them type one and type two. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say suppress feature. We're going to add two more parameters again, also normal numeric. I'm going to call this one hole underscore centers underscore X. Okay. I'm going to make this 25 and then another hole underscore centers underscore y and also 25 okay we're going to hit done and then add another rectangular feature uh, we're going to select the clearance hole again we're going to apply the two axes again All right and then here the same quantity x the same quantity y here we're just going to select the whole centers x and then this one would be whole centers Y. Okay, and then this is left at spacing, that's right. So we can just go OK. Alright, and then we're going to rename this one again. I'm just going to take this one, copy that, and paste it here and just change it to 2. Alright, and then I'm going to take the, the pattern and the whole feature. I'm going to right click and say suppress feature. So we're going to do the same with that hole. So we're going to just take tap hole and threads, both of them, right click on them and say unsuppressed feature, right? So then we're going to also apply the rectangular feature to both of those. So I'm going to select the, the hole and the threads, and then I'm going to go again to the X and Y axis, flip this. I'm going to apply the quantities again, and then here would be the overall X, overall Y. And then the spacing would be distance. Okay. 
and then hit OK there. So I'm going to rename this one to Tapped Hole Pattern Type 1. I'm just going to select all of that, copy it from now for the second pattern. So I'm going to suppress this one here and I'm going to apply another one. Also take tab hole and threads and then the X axis, the Y axis, again quantities. And then here would be the whole centers X, whole centers Y, and that would be spacing. So that's fine. All right. Then here I'm just going to paste the tapped hole name, All right? And then I'm going to take all three of these and just suppress them. We're going to do exactly the same with the slotted hole, All right? So let me just do this quickly. This one would be the overall again. Okay, I'm going to call this one slotted hole pattern type 1. I'm going to copy that again and then suppress it. Then we're just going to do the second method as well. This one would be the whole centers and then it's spacing so that's fine. I'm going to rename this one to type 2 and then suppress that as well as the, as the extrusion. We're going to add three more inputs. I'm going to go to the parameters window and I'm going to add text inputs, right? So Let's just add text and then we're going to call the first one whole underscore type. Okay, we'll leave it blank and then we're going to add another one whole underscore spacing underscore input. Okay, leave it blank as well. And then the last is thread underscore size. All right, we're going to go done. We're going to add our first rule. So under our iLogic window, under the rules tab, we're just going to right click on the blank empty space. And we're going to say add rule. I'm going to call this one lists. Okay. And then we can start adding our rule. On the left here, this panel over here, this is our snippet panel. Okay, so we can just grab snippets from here. I'll show you in this rule here how you would actually apply a snippet. In this window over here, this is our parameter window and our features. So you would notice the user parameters here. So you can just see what your parameters are, as well as the model parameters here. And then you can see your whole feature tree here. And then you'll see actually how we use this this panel in our rules. Okay. So I'm just going to start here. Um, this is our rule panel. So we can just add our rules basically in this panel over here. So I'm just going to start. I'm going to grab a snippet. I'm going to go to the parameters over here, the group parameters, and then I'm going to span it. And then I just going to use the set list. So we just double click on set list and then you'll see this this rule popping up here. Okay, so on line one, this is line one here, and that's line two. So we basically are going to create a list. Okay, for the first list would be for if you go to user parameters, those last three text parameters we created. So this one would be for whole type. Okay, so um, the D0 here in the quotes. Uh, we're going to replace the D0 with the whole type. So you can highlight D0 and you can double click on whole type. So it changed it to whole type. Okay, so this is the parameter and these are its variables. The only thing I don't like about this snippet here 
is the fact that it's horizontal. I like to put them vertically. It just helps you basically visualize your, your variables for this parameter better. Okay, so I'm not going to use these values. I'm going to rename them. So I'm just going to type them in manually. So these would all be texts. So if you do text, you always put them in quotes like this. And then you can just start typing. So the first one we need for hold types is round clearance holds. Oh, let's go singular, hole, and then comma. So now you can have a second, all right? So I'm going to put the second one in. This one we call tapped hole, okay? And then also comma. And then the last one for this is slotted hole, okay? And instead of a comma, we just put the end bracket, all right? And then I'm going to add another one. So I'm just going to double click again on set list. This one here would be whole spacing input. Okay. And then I'm just going to delete the last bit here, the variables. And then I'm going to start typing again. This one only has two. The first one would be by overall center. And then comma and then it is by whole centers and then empty bracket now for this one we're gonna have a condition that that would change the variable based on a certain condition okay so we're gonna do that with an if statement so I'm gonna type in here if okay so the rule we're going to be using is if then and end if. So I'll show you what that entails. We're going to say if, and then I'm going to say here the whole underscore type, right? So you notice it changed to blue, All right? So if you go to your parameters, you can also just simply double click on the parameter. I'm going to delete this one over here. I'm just going to double click on whole type. So you notice it changed to blue. That means the parameter does exist. This is just basically the parameter, all right? So I'm saying if the whole type is equal to, and then we need to say a parameter that is a text. So once again, it has to be in quotes. This one here, we're gonna ask for a tapped hole. So I'm just gonna grab this one here like that. I'm gonna copy it and paste it. This just makes your rules faster and easier to work with. So instead of typing everything and you can make a spell error or something like that, I like generally copying something that's already existing. All right, so I'm saying if the whole type equals tapped hole and, okay, so you also notice that the, the, the red and, so it's part of the if statement. So I'm gonna say if the whole type is tapped hole and the, thickness equals to five millimeter then we want something to happen okay so what we want to happen is we want to basically put in a set list for this condition so we're going to grab another set list in the snippet and this one here would be the thread size so we're going to be controlling the thread size so i'm going to double click on thread size here I'm going to delete the last or the variables. And then I'm going to say here, the first one would be M6 by one, okay, comma. And then the next one would be M8 by 1.25, comma, M10 by 1.5, comma, m12 by 1.75 and then end the bracket okay so what we're saying is if if the whole type is tapped whole right and the thickness is five then we want to see a list of these parameters here okay so these variables in this thread size parameter okay so if we want to add more conditions we basically take the whole 
first part like you see it there and then you can copy it control C and then control V to paste it but if you do that you need to say else if okay so if this condition needs to be extended so you need more than one condition you just generally go else if okay so this one we're going to say we're just going to change the thickness we're going to say here six okay so then if it's six i'm just going to simply delete the first one so i cannot have a m6 tap and an m6 thickness right and the reason for that is just uh, industry standard if you want to drill a hole for m6 tap you need to drill the hole five millimeters because the, the tap is m6 by one and the industry standard says that you shouldn't drill a hole thinner than the plate thickness okay so just, you can do exactly what you want i'm just going to use this as a basis okay so i'm just going to copy the else here i'm going to add another one so i just paste it down and this one would be eight okay so if the thickness is eight then we just can't have a m8 thread okay and then copy it again and then the last one would be 10 and then if it's m10 then we can't have a m10 thread right so then i'm just going to say here end if so we end off all our if statements with this phrase here end if okay so if you try and run the rule without the end if it's just going to give you an error like this so it's saying it has to have an end if right so we just go and if and then save and run okay so our plate thickness now is 10 millimeter thick okay so in our rule we did say if it's 10 i only want to see this variable All right so let's just test this go to the parameters and go to thread size and you can only see that variable there okay so i'm going to go done we're going to add a another parameter uh, this one would be a little bit different this one would be a true and false so we're going to go to the little drop down and select a true and false parameter and this one we're going to call hole required okay so it's just saying are holes required basically so we have a true and a false okay we're going to go done so we're going to add another rule now so we're going to go to the blank space again we're going to right click and say add rule this one i'm going to call feature suppression okay now i do apologize this is going to be a very long rule i promise this is the longest rule we have so i'm just going to uh, military through this one this one basically is going to control which of these parameters to switch on and off in other words which ones to to suppress and which ones to unsuppress okay so we're going to put all the conditions in the rule saying which ones here to go on and off all right so i'm going, just going to start i'm going to say it, this is another if statement so i'm going to say if all right i'm going to go to my user parameters it's saying if the holes are required equals true okay and the whole spacing input equals i'm just gonna put in quotes here by overall centers or center there is a way you can actually just copy this i'm just gonna go down and i'll show you a nice little trick uh, we go to the whole spacing input parameter this one here you're going to right click and say capture current state so then it gives you all the variables for that parameter so you can just go and take this last bit here and then just paste it okay or you can just copy one of the variables like that and then paste it in there and then i'm just going to delete this or maybe I'm going to use it later. So I'm just going to go down and just leave it there for later. And I'm going to say here after this one here, I'm just going to say another end. I'm going to say here, hold type. 
equals now once again we can do the same so we need hole types capture current state and we want to see the round clearance hole so i'm not going to copy this one i'm going to copy that one over there and I'll paste it in there okay and then we're going to go then and then we can start adding the the outputs right i'm going to add just the first one i'm going to start building them and then i'll explain exactly what they all mean all right so we're going to activate features right so the first one i'm going to take here is the clearance hole okay so the clearance hole is the first hole we created so if you click on on the second line and you basically right click on a clearance hole you can once again go to capture current state and then the only thing you do is you just delete the parts you don't need the only thing we want to see is the feature is active okay so you would basically put all the feature is actives in and then leave them at false and at the end if you finish building your rules you'll just change the falses to trues whichever you need this is the quickest way to do it okay so i'm just going to add all the parameters in for the first if okay and then, then i'm going to copy all that and then just start building it like this so let me quickly take all the parameters that we need or the features that we need so the first one was clearance hole and then i'm going to take the clearance hole pattern type one okay and then i'm just going to copy this part i'm going to say the clearance hole pattern type two all right and then the fourth one would be tat hole uh, where is it it's here that one so that's the tapped hole okay and then the tapped hole pattern type one and then type two as well okay and then we have the threads so notice i just start from the top and i just work my way down right and then after threads would be slotted hole and then after slotted hole would be clearance hole pattern type one uh, we did clearance hole pattern type one i'm just gonna go slotted hole so i need slotted hole pattern type one and then copy that one and paste it and then just rename it to type 2 so we have clearance hole two patterns tapped hole two patterns threads slotted hole and two patterns that's right so we've got all the features we need in this list here okay so this is the the basis of of the list so i'm going to start copying these and then just build on every if condition Okay, so just bear with me. I will explain at the end how this works and all that. It's just now to build the list as quick as I can. So the second condition would be holes required is true. All of them, the holes needs to be true. Okay, the very last one will say if the hole says false, then everything just has to be off. All right, so we're saying the hole spacing input, right, is by hole centers, not by hole overall center so i'm just going to highlight that but that is what we need to replace so if i just go down here we need to go by whole centers copy that bit and then paste it in that one's place i'm just going to delete this i'm actually finished with this and then so this is the second condition so the first condition is for both clearance holes but the first one is by overall center. The second one is, is by whole center. Okay, I'm going to copy the first one. I'm going to paste it. Sorry, one thing I did forget to tell you is you need to go else if whenever you add more conditions. Okay, so the reason I copy the first one is because this is going to be the same as that one. The only difference we're going to do now is this one here. So the first one was round clearance hole. Now we're going to change this to tapped hole. So I'm going to grab the tapped hole variable here, copy that. 
and then replace this one with the tapped hole okay and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this one here right because we're also going to have the bar hole centers and then just change the last bit also to tapped hole okay and then I'm going to copy this one because we need that by overall center and then we're going to change the last one to slotted hole okay by overall center that's fine and then copy this one and paste it and then just change the last bit to slotted hole okay and then the very last one we're going to need is just actually taking out all the rest so we're saying if the holes required is false and then this one here is actually 100 percent correct we're not going to change anything on this one so we just want all the whole features to be off when there is no holes required okay i'm going to say here end end if uh, end if right okay i'm going to delete this okay so let me go and change the the outputs so what we're saying is if the whole spacing input is by overall center right so overall center is what we set up here is all the patterns with type one okay type one is overall center type two is by whole centers Okay, so the way if you go back into your feature and you see the way we set it up, this one actually means by overall center, this one means by whole centers. So type one and type two. Okay. So we're saying if the whole spacing input is by overall center and the whole type is round clearance holes. So now this is telling us we're only focusing on the clearance holes. So the rest can all be off because we're not touching the tapped holes or the slotted holes. We're only focusing on clearance holes. Like I said, hole type is round clearance hole. So this one would become true. We want to activate this feature, which is that hole feature over there. So this one will become activated. Okay. And we also set by type one, which is by overall center. So we're going to change this to true. Okay. Now here on the second one, we have the same. It's round clearance hole. So we want to activate round clearance hole. But this time we set by whole centers. So that would be type two clearance hole type two. So we change that to true. Okay. So then we finish with this one. Now the next one focuses on tapped hole. So we want to change tapped hole to true and everything with tapped holes would basically link threads as well. So we're going to always have threads and the tapped hole feature working together. Okay. And then by overall center, that is the pattern type one. So tapped hole pattern type one, that would be true. Okay. So that's this one finished. And then we have here also tapped hole. So that tells us activate tapped hole here and threads as well. Okay. And this one is saying by hole centers. So that is tapped hole type two. Okay. And then we have slotted hole. So that is slotted hole there. I'm going to change that to true. Our overall center is type one. So that would be true. Okay. And then here also slotted hole. There's the slotted hole, change to true. And then this one says by hole center. So that would be type two. And that is true. Okay. And then if there is no holes required, then we're going to say false and everything else is false. Okay. So sorry for this. I know it was very quick. I was trying to run through this as quick as I can. This is a very long rule. So if I got stuck in this, this would be a very, very long video. So if you do get stuck, just once again, just look on the document. The document also shows this. So you can go through on your own time how, how this was set up. Also, you can just go on a video and just pause between every action and you can also just follow me like this. Okay, so this whole or this rule is finished. We're going to go and save and run. Okay, so notice 
the features here started activating. Okay, so this this rule here was in effect. So if you look at the parameters, we had here hole type, tapped hole. So that would be the tapped hole over there. And we said the hole spacing input is by hole centers. So it was tapped hole, okay, tapped hole by hole centers, by hole centers, tapped hole. So this rule here, this, this if statement here, or the condition was in effect. So this one tells us it's going to turn on tapped hole, which is tapped hole over there. It would turn on the threats feature, which is that one over there. And it would turn on the tapped hole pattern type two, which is this one here and that one over there. Okay. So that is basically how you control the features. So we can just start playing around with this a bit. We can just change these two here just to make sure that they do work and they do change. So you notice the, the features here updated when I select round clearance hole. So there's the tapped hole, round clearance hole, slotted hole. So it seems like they are updating. And then we can also say here by overall center, tapped hole, and round clearance hole. How cool is this? Okay. One thing I do need to show you on this rule that we just created, I'm just going to go back into the rule. If you don't do the false, right? So let's say you might be asking, why are you doing all the falses here all the time? Why don't you just activate the trues? So in other words, if we just delete all the falses, it's because if the, the condition is basically, let's say it sits on this condition. So let's say this condition is active. So everything here is true. So it's currently standing then on this condition. And then we select everything in this condition to make this whole thing true here. Right, so we do select the whole spacing input by that variable. We do select the whole type by this variable. And then this one becomes active, right? So then it activates these two features, but it doesn't do anything with the features that you don't list here. Okay. So by putting in all the falses, it's actually telling you to turn these off and not to just leave them as they were. Okay. So it is very important in these feature control parameters or the feature control rules to, to make sure that you do put in any case that you might have to switch it on and off and not just on only. Okay. So I hope that made sense. I'm going to go save and run again. We're going to add some more parameters. These would all be true and false. So we're going to go back to our parameter window and we're going to select here true and false. And the first one is going to be whole underscore centers underscore active. Okay. Next one. Display slotted holes. Okay. And then display underscore thread underscore size. And then another one, display underscore hole underscore diameter. And another one, the last one is overall underscore hole underscore centers underscore active. Okay. So we're going to create a rule that's going to drive all these parameters over here. And then you start understanding uh, what they actually meant for. Okay, I'm going to go done. We're going to add another rule. Uh, this one, we're going to call it triggers. Okay, so this rule will just basically focus on those last true and false parameters we entered. These would only be used to basically activate some parameter inputs on the form. Okay, so you'll start understanding why we do that when we get to the forms. Okay, so now we just want to basically create some rules to make these true and falses controlled. Okay, so the first one, 
So we're going to start another if. We're going to say if the whole spacing input. Okay, I'm just going to get the parameters for it. So we're saying if the whole spacing input equals by whole centers, by whole centers here, okay, and the holes required, this one here, capture current state, is equal to true, then we want the whole centers active, this one here, to be true, okay? And then instead of going else if, normally if we extend, we go else if, you can also just say else, right? Where you would use else is if you don't have basically more than two conditions, right? So it would be either this one or that one, right? So this is just a shorter way. We just say else, okay? So then you don't have to take this one and then basically change one of the, one of the conditions here. Um, so you can just say else and it would do the same thing, okay? So then we can just copy this one here and then paste it and then just uh, tell it this one would be false and then go end if, all right? And then delete this part here. So we're just saying if the whole spacing input, whole spacing input, this is one of the input parameters on the form. So if we select this whole spacing centers on the, on the form, it would just basically tell this trigger to be true so it just triggers the whole centers active okay and then if that is not the case if this is not by whole centers in other words if it's by overall center then this would be false okay and then i'm going to do the second one which is the slotted holes so we're going to go whole type again so if we say the whole type equals to, I'm just going to go and grab the variable, whole type. So if the whole type is slotted whole, so that one over there. Okay, I'm going to delete this again. And then we're just basically going to copy this part here. It's going to be the same. And the holes required is true. Then we're going to say here, display slotted holes equals to true. Okay, we can also then say else. If that's not the case, we're gonna grab this part and we're gonna say it is false. Then we can say end if, okay? So once again, if, if we do select the manual input on the form, the whole type, that one over there, if we do select slotted holes, it would just activate this trigger here, right? And then we're going to do the same for the tapped hole. So we're going to say again, if the hole type equals, uh, let's just go grab it again, uh, hole type current state, and then we just say tapped hole. So we copy tapped hole. Right, and then we're going to do the same with this part here. Copy that and then paste it in there. And then we want the output to be display thread size. So it would be this one here. Okay. And once again, else, else. And then we grab that part and then just say it is false. And then end if, then I'm going to delete this one here. And then we're going to go again, if the whole type, right? So I'm just going to go grab it again, the whole type, capture current state. If the whole type, instead of saying equals, I'm going to say a shorter version of the rule. I'm going to say here is not equal. So that is the symbol for not equal. Right. So if it is not equal to tapped hole, so I'm going to grab this tapped hole here and paste it. And then once again, the holes requirement 
this one over here, copy that and paste it. Then what we want to see is the display hole diameter. So that would be this one here. And then once again, else, and then we just say false. Go end if, All right, I'm going to delete this. And then we're going to add the last one for this rule. It's going to be another if. So we're saying the whole spacing input. So I'm just going to go grab that again. Whole spacing input capture current state. So we're saying if the whole spacing input equals by overall centers. So it would be this one here. Okay. And then once again, the whole requirements. Copy the last bit over there. Paste it in there. Then what we want to see is the overall whole centers is active. Okay. And then else copy paste false and end if. Okay. I'm going to delete this part. And that's basically all the trigger setup. Okay. I'm going to go save and run. Go update. And then you can see here. It did put some of them true and it did change some of them at false. Okay. So we're going to go done. We're going to add another rule. Uh, this one we're going to call distance control. All right. So this one is going to be another if. So we're going to say here if the whole spacing input. So I'm just going to grab it here. Uh, let me just put it in there. The whole spacing input equals, and then I'm just going to grab this, our whole centers and the quantity x equals to then. Right, I'm just going to delete this part. I'm going to say here the overall x equals whole underscore centers underscore x times quantity underscore x and then divided by 2. All right, and then we go else if. Um, I'm going to copy this one here, All right? So else if the whole spacing input is by whole centers and the quantity is more than two. Okay. Then we're going to say here again, overall X equals whole underscore centers underscore X times and brackets the quantity underscore x minus 1. Okay, then we're going to say end if. Okay, so let's just look at what this does. It's saying if the whole spacing input is by whole centers, so we select it on the form by whole centers, okay, and the quantity is 2, so we specified the quantity for x here to be 2, then what we want to do is we want to change the overall distance that's 70 over there we want to tell it use the whole centers x right times the quantity so whole centers x this one times the quantity right so this 25 times 3 and then divided by 2 the only thing we're doing with this is we're telling the overall x okay we're telling that which is driving the parameter, we're telling this distance here to be the whole centers, okay, and then times the quantity. So it would take the overall whole centers times the quantity. So it gives you the overall pattern distance. And then we just say offset or divided by two, right, because the quantity is two. Okay. And then what we're saying then is if it's more than two, right, we're doing exactly the same, but then this time we just take the holes, 
right? And we're actually using the spaces between the holes. So it's saying the, the quantity minus one. So if the quantity is three, then the spacing would be the distances between three holes, which is two gaps, right? That's what this is telling us. And it's just telling us to set the overall distance based on that, all right? And then what we want to do is we want to copy this, this whole part. And then we want to add another one just for the Y direction. Okay, so then we just say here the X is Y and the X there is Y. This one, that one. Uh, same with this, same with that, this one, and this one. Okay, so this rule is just going to drive our distance, right? Our overall distance X and overall distance Y on the patterns. Okay, so if only if we do select the whole centers on the form, it's going to basically run this rule. Okay, save and run. We're going to add another parameter. Okay, this one is going to be a numeric. So we're just going to say here, this is the whole underscore factor. Okay, and the whole factor we measure in unit list. So it's UL. And uh, we're going to set this one to three. All right. And then we're going to add another rule. This rule here, we're going to call it limit, sorry, limit control. This rule is going to control all our limits. So when your hull is too small for the plate, or if your whole pattern is too wide for the plate, or it doesn't fit on the plate, um, this rule would be controlling all those um, factors. So we're going to do another if. We're going to say here if the whole spacing input, so I'm just going to go grab it, the whole spacing input equals to, I'm just going to grab it again, capture, and then we're going to say by whole centers, and we're going to say the overall x, this one here, is more than the length x minus in brackets whole underscore diameter times the whole factor <clears throat> then okay then we're going to say the over all x okay equals length x minus in brackets again then we're going to just copy this part here the whole diameter times the whole factor okay and then we're going to do a quantity underscore x equals then we're going to say ceiling in brackets the overall x divided by and brackets again then we're going to copy this part here again and paste it and then we're also going to have a whole underscore centers underscore x equals overall x divided by in brackets quantity minus one uh, sorry quantity underscore x minus one and then we say end if so this is just a once off trigger so if this condition is met, then it's just going to run this rule. It doesn't have any else. So it's just going to set it once. All right. So let me quickly explain what this rule entails. It's saying if we go in a form and we choose the whole centers on the whole spacing input. So if we say we want to determine the spacing input by whole centers. So by whole centers over there. And the overall x, so that overall distance on the pattern, this one here, that's 70, is more than the length x, the length x, okay, minus the whole diameter times whole factor. So what we're saying is if the pattern is bigger than a plate, right, but the plate minus the whole diameter times factor, so let's say our whole diameter is 10, 
whole diameter it's 10 times the whole factor so the whole factor is 3 so that, that this gives us 30 so if the length right so the length is 100 minus 30 that gives us 70 so if our pattern is bigger than 70 okay and we select it by whole centers then it's basically going to run the rule for these parameters over here okay so the parameters then in that case would basically do this they would say change that overall x so change the whole pattern overall size okay and we change it to the length x basically this part over there so we change it to the maximum we can have on the plate okay so once again the 100 minus 30 gives us 70 so if it's more than 70 make it 70 all right so then that one sets the overall distance on a pattern so then this one here controls the quantity it's going to basically say the ceiling so let me quickly explain ceiling so ceiling is a rounding so it's a round function so you get round okay and then you get uh, floor and then you get ceiling so the round would take a 2.3 and it would just make it a 2 so it just rounds it to the nearest and then a floor would also do the same but it would round down so if we had a 2.6 it would round it down to 2 okay and then the ceiling as well is just the flip side on the floor this is going to say if you have a 2.3 it's going to make it a 3 all right so what we're saying is the ceiling of this whole argument here okay and it is that overall distance on the pattern divided by the 30 so the whole diameter times the factor okay so we are saying here 70 divided by 30 okay that would give us the quantity we need right to to get to the maximum uh, pattern distance okay and then we also say change the whole centers all right for that pattern so what we do then is we take the overall x we take the overall x there and divided it by the quantity minus one so divided by the quantity here minus one so whenever we say minus one it's always because in a pattern if you have holes so let's say you have five holes when it comes to distances to holes you always use the spaces between the holes so if you have five holes there would be four spaces between them that's why we say minus one okay and then um, basically i do have to also explain one small thing it's the 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 way the flow works on the rule okay so let's say we did start with the whole centers first okay so let's say we did this the flow would be wrong on this rule basically what we what we then saying is we're saying change the whole centers based on the overall distance and the quantity okay because this parameter here uses the overall distance and the quantity to calculate the value okay but what the problem here is we're saying doing that by using these two parameters but these two parameters haven't been calculated yet okay because they're coming after this line here so just remember with the rule when you run a rule it always starts at line one and then it follows through and then it goes to line two and it follows through and it just keeps on going until the last bit all right so the rule doesn't go back and it doesn't recalculate the line all right so what's going to happen here it's going to basically run the rule it's going to set this distance but based on the current before you enter anything based on the current overall distance and a current quantity okay so it would basically mess it up so the rule would jump back and forth the whole time and you wouldn't get the actual results that you that you need all right so that's why we have the whole centers x at the last bit of the rule so it basically calculates the quantity and then it calculates the the oh sorry the the distance and then the quantity and then it runs this rule here so this flow is now right okay so i'm just going to take this whole rule i'm going to paste it down and I'm just going to change everything for y. Oh, sorry, this one, we're just going to grab the width. Okay. And here is y. This one is width. Y. 
Y. Okay, and then that's it for both directions. Okay, we're going to go down and uh, create another rule. We're going to say here if the holes underscore required equals true and the length underscore x is less than the whole underscore diameter times whole underscore factor then we're going to say the length underscore x equals the whole diameter times the whole factor so all this does basically it just says the if the holes are required okay and the length is less than 30 then make the length 30 all right so it's just a minimum size you can have on the length right but it only does that when your holes are required because um, if there are no holes then it doesn't matter how big your plate really is okay so this just drives the limit of our plate or the smallest limit of our plate size okay we can go in if and then we're going to copy this down to make it y so we're going to go with y and then here as well all right so this controls our minimum plate size Okay, and then we're going to add another one. We're going to say here if the whole underscore diameter is less than thickness, then we want to make the whole diameter equal to thickness. So this is also just a one shot rule. So it's basically controlling the, the whole diameter. So you can't have the whole diameter less than the plate thickness. All right. So if, if the plate thickness is 6 and you're putting in a 5, it's just going to jump right back up into 6. All right, we're going to add another another one. We're going to say if the whole underscore type equals slotted hole. So let me just grab it here again, the whole type there. So if we use the slotted hole right on the form, And so remember the two reference dimensions we added on the slotted hole when we did the sketch really this this hole over there. So what we're doing is we're gonna grab those. So we're gonna say the large one, the D41. Okay. I'm just gonna show you where they are. I'm just gonna try and exit this, but if we exit now, this this rule isn't complete. So I just put a a single quote in there and then I'm just gonna go save and run. So this these two over here, they use these were the driven reference dimensions we made. Okay. So we're gonna now drive the rule based on these two dimensions. And then I'm gonna go back in it. Alright, remove the quote. So we're saying D41 is less than the whole underscore diameter times the whole underscore factor divided by two. Then we want to control the overall distance, so overall y. So you notice we use y and not x. Okay, so y is because that slotted hole is only facing one direction. It, it doesn't rotate 90 degrees on the plate, so we only need to control that by the Y. The X is already controlled based on the whole diameter alone. Okay, so then we're going to go here with Y. Uh, sorry, equals with Y minus in brackets the whole underscore diameter times the whole underscore factor minus and then another reference dimension this one would be d40 okay and then end if okay so this limit here tells us if we choose slotted hole only if it is slotted hole 
and the D41, this one here, is smaller than the whole diameter times the whole factor divided by 2, so this is the 10 times, remember 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, so this is 15. So if our hole or the center of the, the nearest hole to the edge of the plate, if that is less than 15, okay, and then what we want to do is then we want to control the overall, which is now that one over there, the overall distance on the pattern, we want to change that then. We want to say then take the width, which is the 100, minus, okay, the 30, right? So the 10 times 3, 30, and then again minus d 40, minus the 5, all right? So then what we're doing is we're controlling the maximum pat, uh, or the maximum distance on the pattern for this direction on the slotted holes. So let's just go see what it does. So remember this so we're gonna basically tell inventor to move the pattern based on that limit if this here becomes too close to the edge and that formula there would basically take this distance so the whole center so imagine we just had a singular hole there that distance to the edge of the plate would be the same as this distance to the edge of this plate so the limit is is now working for both ways even on a slotted hole all right, so to actually see what it does, if we go take the parameter, so we are by overall center, so we can just change the overall center then. So let's make this 100. So remember our, our width is 100, and then let's say we want to take the pattern and make it big, basically bigger than the plate size itself. Then that the rule we just did now is going to basically take it down to 60, 65. Okay. So I'm just going to go back down and then go again. So you see this? It doesn't go bigger than 100. Okay. All right. And then we're going to go back into that rule. And then we're going to add another one. And this one here, we're going to have if the whole spacing input. So just go down the whole spacing input. So if the whole spacing input equals by overall center, so copy that and paste it by overall center and the overall x, this one is more than the length x minus the hole in brackets underscore diameter times hole underscore factor then sorry we close the bracket here and we go then and then we want to control the overall distance again so the overall distance x equals the length underscore x minus and then this argument there. So the whole diameter times whole factor. And then we also want to change the quantity. So that's quantity underscore x equals again ceiling overall underscore x divided by a bracket again and then we're going to add this part here and then end if okay so let's just look at this quick we're saying if we do choose the by overall center okay and uh, sorry this one here was supposed to be more than not a question mark. So we're saying if we do choose by overall center and our maximum or our overall pattern distance is more than the length minus the 30, so 70. So if the pattern is more than 70, then we're going to change the overall and the quantity. This is basically the same as this one here. The only difference is here we set by whole centers. And now we're choosing by overall center. Okay. So 
we're saying if we do choose by overall center and the pattern this the overall pattern distance is more than 70 then we want to change the overall distance back to 70 so the maximum again all right and then as well the quantity uh, so then we say set the overall pattern distance and then change the quantity based on that so then we say the overall distance divided by 30 so it'd be 70 divided by 30 all right and then with the ceiling as well part of the equation is going to go up to three so there you see the three over there okay and then we're going to take this whole one over here and we're going to paste it down and we're going to change everything for the y to make it work in in both directions okay so that's all changed and then we're going to add another one we're going to say this is a short one if the quantity underscore x is less than two then we're going to go quantity underscore x equals to two and then end if okay and then we're going to do the same with the y pattern if this is y and y so what we're saying is if the quantity is less than two then make it two because um, uh, the way we structured this this model wasn't really meant for a pattern less than two we can have it we can make it so if we have a one pattern then we put the 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 one hole of or the one row hole in the center of the plate and all that but then it's basically a very long tutorial so i didn't want to make it too complicated but that's definitely possible to put it in i think in a previous tutorial lesson three i did do that i had the pattern and then I had the the rule driving it to have the the one row on the pattern on the plate as well. Then it just basically takes the row and put it in the center of the plate. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm not going to do that. And then we're going to add the last one for limits. We're going to say here if the whole spacing input again. I'm just going to delete this part here. If the whole spacing input is by uh, this was the wrong one by whole centers okay and the whole centers x is less than the whole underscore diameter times the whole factor all underscore factor then okay then we're going to say the whole centers x equals to the whole diameter times the whole factor okay and then end if so this one is telling us if we do choose the whole centers and our whole centers itself that we specify okay is smaller than than the whole diameter times the whole factor then we're just going to basically make the whole centers the minimum whole diameter times whole factor so this would be the 30 so if we choose a distance or a pitch distance between the holes less than 30 it's going to basically drive it right back up to 30 okay so that controls that limit and we're just going to do the same for y and that's it these are all our limits i know this is a bit confusing but if you go through it in the document and maybe just rerun the tutorial and then pause in between then you'll get a good understanding how they actually work so this is basically th this rule here when i said in the start of the video it's got built-in protection all the protection comes from this one which i call limits all right so the limits protects our model so we can just basically quickly just test some of them we can just change the parameters and see if they work we, we can say here uh, we're going to choose the whole spacing input okay and then we're going to deliberately try to make the whole centers too big okay so we're going to go seven run here so we're going to go let me just choose here maybe just around clearance hole just to make it simpler and we're going to say by whole centers and then i'm going to say here 
we're going to change the whole centers X. So we're going to make this 100. Then it goes back to 35. You see that? Okay. And this one as well. So it took the 100 and it drove it right back to 35. Okay. So that controls our whole centers. And then if we go back to the rule, then we also had, uh, so this one is the same as that one. Holes required is true. Okay. And then the length X is smaller than the hole diameter. Okay. So this was the minimum plate size. So if we go and try and make the plate size small, then it basically brings it right back up. Okay. You see that? So it goes from 10 to 30. So it just drives our minimum plate size. And then if we go back to the rule, we also had here the hole diameter minus, okay, so the hole diameter is smaller than the thickness. So if we try and make the hole diameter uh, 2, then it goes back up to 10. So let's just go and change the thickness to 6. So let's go 2 again. Then it goes up until 6. Okay. Back to the rule. Uh, we also said here, if it's slotted hole, okay, so this was uh, controlling the, the overall center on a slotted hole. So if we go back to um, slotted holes here, and we're going to basically take the center, so this one here, I'm going to go back up, and then here as well. Okay, and we choose by overall center, then it basically did this. All right, so it uh, made the offset to the edge of the plate the same as this one. Okay. And then back to the rule. We were here. And then also, if we have the overall center chosen and the overall X is too big. Okay. So that was just the opposite by this one. So if we go, uh, let's change the round clearance hole again. So we make the, the overalls too big again. So that just controls that limit again. Okay. So it made it 82, right? Based on that equation. So we're going to go back. Okay, and then we said if the quantity is too small, right? So if we try and make the quantity one, then it goes to two. Okay. And then as well as the whole spacing input is per whole centers, and the whole centers is less than 30. Okay, so by whole centers, and we're going to try and make it very small. Okay, by whole centers, and I'm going to make the centers too small. So I'm going to make this five, and it goes up to 18. All right, so then these limits all work. Okay, okay so there are more limits we can put in. There, there can be a whole bunch of it to try and control everything on the model. Just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to do that there are quite a lot more we can actually add. So in a couple of next tutorials, I'll just add some of those so that you can get a good understanding of what limits we can have on a model like this. Okay, so for now, I'm just gonna end the limits here. We're gonna add another parameter. This one would be a numeric. We're gonna call this one thread underscore hole underscore diameter. Okay, I'm just going to set it to 5 for now. Okay, we go done. So we're going to add another rule here. We're going to call this one thread control. Okay, and then we're going to say here if the thread size, so we're going to just go find it here. If the thread size equals to m6 by 1, then 
then we want the whole diameter so where is that thread hole diameter so just find it thread hole diameter this one to be five millimeter okay and also we want to change or we want to put in the threads on the actual feature as well okay so we want to say uh, well, let's grab the feature capture the state and then we want to basically just put the m6 by one on here as well okay so notice the thread doesn't have any spaces uh, we just did it like this so it's just easier to read okay so i'm just going to copy this one and i'm going to paste it down put in else and then the next one is m8 by 1.25 all right so then the thread hole diameter is 6.8 okay so just remember that uh, if you do need a uh, to tap a hole m6 by one then um, a nice general rule if it says m6 by one so that the one is the thread pitch okay so you just say then six minus one equals five the same here eight minus 1.25 is well the nearest is 6.8 so you get a 6.8 millimeter drill bit all right so then we're going to say here eight by 1.25 and then copy this down again and then we're going to do the same with 10 so it's 10 by 1.5 that gives us 8.5 10 by 1.5 okay copy paste and then it's m12 by 1.75 that gives us 10.2 12 by 1.75 here okay then we're going to say end if okay <clears throat> and then we just want to basically control the hole so if we do select the tapped hole right on the form then we would just want to tell the thread hole diameter to basically control the the hole diameter all right so that's a simple one if statement again okay so we're just going to go grab it here if this is the holes required so if the holes are required equals true and the hole type let's just find hole type here oh my goodness yeah hole type equals tapped hole then we want to take the hole diameter equals the thread hole diameter uh, where is it thread hole diameter okay then end if so all we're saying is if we do select that hole then make sure that the hole diameter equals thread hole diameter all our features here we control the hole sizes on the features by hole diameter so what we're saying is we controlling the thread hole diameter right so then just make the hole diameter equals thread hole diameter so once this is untrue so if this is all false or one of these are false then it would just go back to normal to hole diameter then you can just type in the hole diameter okay so we're gonna finish this one uh, we're gonna say save and run Okay, so let's go test it quick. So we're gonna just um, see here what we have. We have here the hole diameter is 10.2, and then the thread hole diameter is 10.2 as well. So the, the rule drove the thread hole diameter to link up with the hole diameter. Okay, so then we have the thread size here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this to tapped. All right, so if this is tapped hole, then we can just see if if the sizing works so we can change this to m8 m10 and m12 okay so you see them change all right so if if you do have a problem okay so when you finish the thread control rule and um the, there was an error with the threads um i know that the threads in general is, is 
is, is a bit of a problem so you might get an error here if that's the case uh, just go into your patterns right and then deselect the, the thread feature so you would basically do that with both patterns and then what you do is then you go to each button again and then just reselect the feature so that's a, just a little bug that that we have um, on these threads right so only if that happens to you you can do that okay so then we are quite happy with with the threads here and also we said that if we change the the thickness then basically our list updates and all that so it seems like that's fine just go 10 yeah so that works as well all right <clears throat> let's go five and then let's see m6 all right okay so all this seems to be fine and i'm going to go done okay so we're going to add another parameter um, this one is going to be a text parameter this one we're going to call picture underscore name okay, and then go done and then we're going to add a rule again uh, this one we're going to call picture naming okay and then here we're going to say if the whole type uh, whole type equals now i'm just going to go grab it whole type state if it is round clearance hole okay and the whole spacing input uh, let me just double click equals i was going to grab that if that is by overall center There we go then. Okay, then we're gonna take that last parameter we added, picture name equals in uh, quotes TN1. So that stands for thumbnail one. Okay. And then we're gonna grab that, we're gonna copy it, paste it, we're gonna say else if. And then this would be also clearance hole, but this one would be by whole center so I'm just going to grab this and copy that paste and then this would be thumbnail 2 okay and I think we're done with this one and I'm going to grab that copy it paste and then here would be by overall center so paste that in and this one would be tapped hole so I'm just going to copy tapped hole Okay, and this would be thumbnail three. All right, then I'm just gonna copy this one because we're gonna have a by hole centers for tapped hole. Um, and then tapped hole here, copy, paste, and thumbnail four. And then I'm gonna grab this one because we're gonna need by overall center. And then this one would be slotted hole. And our overall center, so this is then thumbnail five. And then we're gonna grab this one because we need our whole centers again. And then this one would be slotted hole and thumbnail six. All right, then we're gonna say end if. Okay, so then we're gonna go save and run. And then update so in our parameters we can see it's now set that thumbnail three i'm just going to go done okay so we are finished with all our rules and then um, the one thing i like to do when i know that i'm finished with the rules is just to add them in event triggers so if you go to manage and go to the all logic section and then you'll see the event triggers there then i just normally take all the rules and i drag them underneath any model parameter change like that so I just take them one by one just drag them across so
So let's just make sure that your rules run. Okay, so when you change any parameter, then it's going to just start from the top and just run everything that's inside this rule and then go to the next, go to the next until it's finished. Okay, so then we just say okay. All right. <laughs> well, this has been very long so far and uh, I applaud you for being here still. Um, I know this is very boring and all that. So um, we're getting to the fun part now where we just do the, the form. Okay. So we're going to go to the form step, right? And then we're going to right click and say add form. Sorry. Add form. And then we're going to just rename the form here. We're going to say this is the plate control. Okay. And here at the bottom, this is our properties uh, for all the elements in our form. So if you click on plate control, this this one here represents the whole form. So if you click on it, you'll see the set of properties here. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to just change the visual style. It's uh, currently at default. So we're going to change it to Dev Express Dark Style. Okay, and then on the right hand side here, you can see the live update on the form. Okay, on the left, this panel here, this is our parameters. So we are now on the parameters tab. So this is just the parameters that we have available to put on a form. And then we also have a rules tab. And then you can basically, if you have rules that you wanted to add to the form, you can grab it here. And then also I properties. Okay. So we're just going to be working on the parameters. And then on the bottom left corner here, this panel, this is the toolbox panel. So we're going to be using a lot of these as well. Okay, so let's start adding elements. So we're going to add our first tool. We call it tab group. Okay, so what this does, um, it's like this one here. So you have tab group one, then you can have more tabs here. So if you click on this tab, it will just bring up all the properties that's situated underneath this tab. And then um, the second and the third and the fourth. Okay, so then we're going to rename this one. We're going to say here, this is the plate size. Okay, so you notice it updates here as well. Okay, so we're going to add a picture. So we're going to also grab the picture from the toolbox. And then we're just going to put it underneath the plate size. Okay. And then we're just going to add the image to it. So we've got image here and then that little browser button there. We're going to click on that. And then I'll also include this with the, with the document as well. So you're more than welcome to use these thumbnails. So I'm just going to go to TN1, thumbnail one. I'm going to go open. You can see the live update here. And then one thing I always do is I never change the limits on the form itself, the size limits over here. So this is now on a form. I normally do it with a picture. So whenever, uh, well, all my full forms have pictures in them. So I just normally um, change the limits on the picture size. So on my picture size, I just have a general one for all the rules. I've got 350 by 350 as minimums and then 500 width and 500 high as maximums. So I normally do all my thumbnails to 500 pixels by 500 pixels. Okay, and then I just set this up and then this should work for, for all your forms. I'm just gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna open that form again. So under the form step, you can see the button displayed now. So we can just click on that. So this is the actual size then of your form. Okay, so you can't make it really smaller you can do it like this you can see the pictures limits basically set up like this okay so if we click it again it's going to basically stay there so i'm just going to put it like this and then right click again on that button and say edit and we can edit okay so now we're going to add a row so this is the row here so I'll explain exactly how a row works. So you just put the row under the pictures tab. And then we're going to add two parameters, the length, length X under the row, and then width X just under the row. So what happens? It just puts the two parameters side by side. Okay. 
So if we didn't put the width under the row as well, so let's just say we just put it under the plate size, and we just put them above each other. Okay, so that's what row does. So everything under row would go side by side. Okay, and then we can rename um, the parameters. So we can just say here length, and then we can say width. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you rename it to. Uh, the inventor name is always kept. So you can see the inventor name on the right hand side. So you can name it to anything you want. Okay. And then I'm just also going to add the thickness, not under the row, but under the plate size. So this one will just go to the bottom. All right. Okay. So we're going to add another tab group. All right. So this tab group should be on the same level as plate size. So if you follow that little line down, it should be on the same line really. So to do that, we're just going to let it go under the plate control, under the form itself. That's right. So you can see it here. So this is on the same level as the plate size tab group. Okay. So on the form, it's just on the right hand side there. And then we're going to rename this one to holes. Okay. So this, everything in this tab group would control all our holes. Okay. All right, so we're going to add two parameters in here. We're going to say the whole factor and the the holes required. So holes required, if I can just find it here, there it is. So holes required, we're just going to let it go on the actual holes tab group. Okay, so it puts it there. And then whole factor, this one here, the same thing. Okay, so I'm just going to click on holes there so you can see the live update on that. So I'm just going to say holes required. Okay, and we're going to say here, whole factor, or let's call this whole spacing factor. All right, so that's how it looks like then. Okay, so we're going to add another picture. So this picture here, we'll also let go under the whole step group like this. Okay, on the pictures one here, we're not going to tell it to use an image. So instead, we're going to control this image right with uh, with the adaptable image folder okay so i'll show you how to do that but the parameters we are going to set up for this one is size limits so we're going to say here again 350 350 500 and 500 okay so then we set that up and then you have one here saying the behavior, right? So this one would be controlling our adaptivity to the picture. So it says here the picture parameter name. So we did add this parameter before, okay? So the parameter name was picture name. So if you go back to the video or the document, you'll see exactly how we set up the picture name parameter. So this parameter is also being driven by iLogic rules. Okay, so this would change values on certain conditions. All right. Okay, so then we're going to add a what they call a picture folder. This one here. We're going to just put it underneath the picture. So on the holes tab group, we're going to let it go there. So just underneath the whole pictures here. Okay, so here, the naming on these is um, is very important so that's what's going to actually drive which picture to use so if we say here t in one okay then that would use the thumbnail or the file name called t in one right so that means that if our picture name here displays t in one it's basically going to call this one here t in one okay but here we need to set up the, the image, all right? So we're going to tell it T in one is, well, this is actually kind of overlapping. So T in one here would be T in two on the thumbnails here. Okay. And then we just do the same with, with uh, T in two. So we're just going to overlap it T in three. All right. And then if you want to add here, you just grab a simple picture uh, like this one, not a picture folder. So just a picture, then you drop it underneath picture folder one. All right. TN3. And the same here. TN4. And then another TN4. This one would be TN5. Another one. T4. 
18, six, uh, fives here. This one will be T in six. Another one, and the last one is T in six, which would be T in seven here. Okay, so now then all our pictures would be adaptive and driven by that picture name parameter. All right, so here, just to make our form look a little bit better and all that, um, this is where we add empty spaces. So I'm just going to add an empty space. Uh, this one would be dropped under the holes here. All right, so it just creates a little space for us. So then we're going to say here, hole spacing input. So we're just going to drop this underneath the empty space here. Okay. And then I'm just going to call this here, maybe let's say pattern whole pattern input now let's leave it at whole spacing input okay so we just leave it like that okay so you notice the the empty space between the picture and this parameter so if i just drag this down you see it just brings it right up against the picture folder So that's why I create the space here. It's just to create a little bit of a, a gap. Okay, so I'm going to add another space. So I'm just going to drop this under whole spacing input here. Okay, then I'm just going to add whole type. Um, so this is where we choose our whole type here. Okay. And then I'm going to add another space like that. Then I'm going to say here what the whole diameter should be. So the whole diameter, there it is. So I'm just going to drop that there. I'm just going to say here whole diameter. Okay. So you notice on the on all of these these thumbnails, all the whole diameter diagram display would all come down to D. So I'm just going to say here in brackets D. So normally when you see a bracket on the parameter here, you know that refers to the to the actual thumbnail here. Okay. And then I'm going to add thread size. So that's this one here. So I'm just going to add that underneath that. And then I'm just going to rename it to thread size. Okay, so then I'm just going to add here the slot length. So that's this one here. I'm just going to also put it down there. And I'm just going to do it like this. I'm just going to add another space here. So empty space. So what I normally do is I just, the parameters that goes together, I just group them like that. So you've got a group here and then empty spaces um, either side of the group. It just reads better like that. Okay. And then I'm going to add another row. So the row, just drop it underneath the empty space here. And then the overall center, so the overall X and the overall Y. Oh, shucks, it moved. So I'm just going to go down. Both of them under the row 2 here. So you notice what it does here. Okay, so I'm just going to call this over, overall centers in brackets X. And then the same with this one, just with Y. Okay. And then here you can see it's very close to the other box here. So I'm just going to add another space between these two. So whenever there is a space between between parameters under the row, so you can see this falls under the row, it creates the space horizontally. So like that here. All right. So it just opened the gap there for us. Okay. And then I'm going to add another row. So the row would be on the same level as this one. So if you follow it there, so we just drop it under the holes tag group. And then we're going to add here the quantity. So quantity X. So I'm just going to do it from the start and then space. And then quantity Y. Like that. Okay, so quantity across length, in brackets x, 
Um, actually not, you know, this is not a not a value like that. So we're just gonna grab that, paste it in there, and then across width. Okay. Then I'm gonna add another row. So a row again under the whole stab group there. Okay, so like that. And then we're gonna add here the whole centers X spacing and whole centers Y. Okay, so whole centers across length. Copy that, paste it, and all centers across width. Okay, so this is referencing X. And this one is referencing Y. All right, and that's the basic setup on the form. So now what we want to do is we want to turn some of these on and off, you know, when it goes gray. So we want to um, just control that basically uh, with a couple of parameters here. So we want to say what happens if the holes required is false. We want everything to be switched off really. Okay. And also with the whole spacing input and the whole type input, we also want to control some parameters here or activity really. So what we're going to do is we're going to start there at the whole spacing input. So if we go to whole spacing input here, okay. And what do we want to control or what do we want to display or activate and not activate based on this? So by overall center. So if you remember the rule we created, the one that we called triggers, right? So the triggers was meant for this. Okay, so what we're going to do now is all being driven by the rule named triggers. Okay, so we want something to happen if we select the whole spacing input, right? So now it's by overall center. So overall centers is here. So we want to say if, if this is selected as overall centers, okay, we want this to be displayed. And if not, then we don't want it to be displayed or just be grayed out. Okay, so we have here on the behavior something called enabling parameter name. So that's where you would do it. So if you go to the drop down, so we're controlling the overall centers. So the overall whole centers active. Okay. So if this one equals true, then you would be able to use this input. If it's false, it would be grayed out. Okay. So that's how that works. So we're going to use it on the overall centers X and the overall centers Y. So overall whole centers active, that's fine. Quantity, not necessarily by that, but the centers, right? The whole centers X and whole centers Y. So we're going to also do that here. So the whole centers active, that would apply for both of these. Okay. I got it. Okay, and then for the quantities, all right, the only thing that's going to enable quantities is the holes required. Okay, so then we're just going to add that the holes required for both of these, the X and the Y. So we're going to say here holes required. So if this is false, basically, we're going to see the quantities be grayed out. Okay, all right, and then for slot length here, we're going to use one called the slots display slotted holes. Okay. And then for the threads, we're going to have one as well for that. This one, come on, that one would be the display thread size. All right. And then for the hole diameter here, we also have one for that. It says display hole diameter here. Okay, and then for these two, whole type and whole spacing input, we're just going to use the holes required. Okay, for both of those, holes required. We can do the same with the whole spacing factor. We can just say holes required. Okay, and then I'm just going to 
change the the multi-value boxes here so i'm just going to go to let's go to holes required that one we can do we can say here we can say here edit control type it's currently true false we can just change it to tick box okay so you then have that little check box over there the whole spacing factor that's fine uh, that that shouldn't be a problem uh, the whole spacing input here we can also change this to radio group the edit control type so then change that to radio group and then the whole type we can also have a radio group I like that the thread size i think i'm happy with that you can change it if you want if we go to let's go to thread size and see what we can do there let's go to ready group yeah we, we can have that if you want to it's not a problem and yeah i think this is everything we need for the form okay so i'm just going to go okay and then i'm just going to click on plate control and then this is where we can start playing with our model All right so we can change the sizes and see if they work This all looks perfect. With 10, yeah, that's fine. No five, that's fine. The holes, let's tick it off. Everything went off. That's fine. Tick it on. All right, that's perfect. You can change this. That's fine. Uh, by hole centers, that the thumbnail updated here, so that's perfect. Okay. The round clearance hole, they changed it on a model. That's fine, the thumbnail updated as well. Tapped hole, thumbnail updated, model updated. Slotted hole, that's perfect. Hole diameter here, that's fine. Let's go to tapped hole. So this updated, that's fine. Okay, everything works in here. Slotted hole, okay, this seem to update the length that updated quantities and that's fine let's go 25 oh, the minimum is 40 so that rule works okay let's go to by overall center here this all updated at the bottom that's fine let's go to 100 100 that's fine Let's go to 200, and that works. All right, so it seems like everything works on the form. And um, finally, that is it. Um, congratulations, and I really do applaud you for sticking through this whole video, and uh, well done. And if you did finish this video, you would probably know how our logic works, and uh, I think from there on you can take it on yourself because we dealt with most of the things that you have on a daily basis that comes to iLogic, all right? And even the form, I, I don't think I can show you anything more in the form that I already have. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in our next tutorial. As always, please visit our website. You can download iLogic 3D models over there, as well as visit the forum, uh, where you can ask specific questions and get the answers from the masters.